Hello, Chris Jones here, Technical Director at Posturite again, and I'm joined again today by our one and only Ellie Hale. Welcome to April's Workright webinar. This month, I'm going to be talking about conflict resolution in the workplace. Yes, we are. How are you, Ellie? I've got a bit of a cold today, Chris, so I apologise everyone for my husky voice. Um, I'll try not to cough and splutter too much. But I hope you guys are well. Thanks for tuning into this one. Um, so, conflict resolution. <clears throat> I wanted to understand a bit more about conflict resolution um, in preparation for this webinar. So, I looked up the definition of conflict. As a noun, it's a serious disagreement or argument. As a verb, it's be incompatible or at a variance or a clash. So, um, this course, where did this course come from, Chris? Um. We, we had it requested by quite a few of our customers as something that was missing from our, our suite of courses and they were experiencing it in the workplace, with, particularly in the retail sector, um, but actually it was, it's been quite popular throughout the in, sort of various industries that we deal with, but, um, I think with a particular focus on retail was the initial request. Yeah, so, so yeah, predominantly um, the course was built uh, for a customer facing role, people that were in their shops um, and were having some difficult customers. But that said, I mean, conflict resolution can stretch so much more than just customer facing. It can be with interaction with clients and also interaction with your, your colleagues as well. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to go through the course. As always, um, there's an introduction showing you how to use the course. So it's difficult to go through life without experiencing conflicts, but with some simple tools and knowledge, you can learn to manage these conflicts and reduce the risk of abusive and violent behavior. Managing conflict is essential to maintaining a healthy working environment. Throughout this course, you'll be presented with a number of scenarios. Your responses to those will result in an overall harmony or conflict score. The score does not affect whether you pass this course. So for this, we decided to do something a bit different and actually get your staff to think about themselves at work and how their work environment makes them feel. And the responses to the harmony score has been really positive. So the aim of this course is to help you recognize different aspects of conflict that employees may encounter and be aware of and understand the various methods available to resolve such conflicts. The course will give you an understanding of the common causes of conflict, breakdowns in communication, the communication models for conflict resolution and how to protect yourself from abusive and violent behavior. So guys, we're going to ask you to get involved and think about how this particular scenario would make you feel. Your bus was cancelled and you're late for work. We've all been there. You run all the way across town in the pouring rain because you're the only one with the keys and you're supposed to open up. Out of breath and dripping wet, you arrive 10 minutes late. People are waiting by the doors. A teenager grumbles. What time do you call this? Some of us have got a life. On a scale of one to five, how would that make you feel? Brilliant, you're right. Well, I'll launch a poll so um, all you guys can uh, can try and contribute as well. Um, but Ellie, how, how how do you reckon that would make you feel? I'm not a morning person anyway, so I think that would make me livid. So actually, that probably mean you'd be early. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be I'd be on a I'd be on yeah. Timekeeping's not my best, but I'd I'd probably say that would make me a four, especially if someone was chipping in with what they thought. Excellent. Well, let's go for that. I think most people have voted now as well, so I'll, I'll close the poll and. Uh, we will see what everybody else thought. Solid four there, I'd say, uh, with a few threes, few sort of, sort of sitting on the fence in the middle there of neither calm nor angry. Um, so, <laughs> a few livid people with me. A few livid, yeah, absolutely. So I, I selected four, um, and I'm told that you've done your best. Um, under circumstances out of your control and it's not your fault that the bus was cancelled but nor is it the teenager's fault in the same way you may feel upset with the bus company the teenager may feel upset with you for making him late the situation could well start a conflict if the situation is escalated rather than diffused so that's quite a good thing to think about not just how you're feeling but how how the way you react and, and the kind of domino effect how that can affect colleagues so we're going to click on Moving on to the common causes of conflict. So conflicts in the workplace are almost inevitable, whether they are between colleagues or with customers. 
An understanding of the common causes of conflicts will enable you to avoid them and help to manage and reduce their impact. An awareness of the circumstances that may aggravate and lead to conflict will help you preempt these triggers. It allows you to resolve the causes before conflict arises and prepares you to manage conflicts calmly and effectively. I think calm's the key word there, Chris, isn't it? How you need to handle that. Absolutely. So again, guys, it, this is completely confidential as well in terms of the webinar and the poll. Um, but if you think about your own work environment, on a scale of one to five, how often do you experience conflicts at work? So, Chris, do you often experience conflicts at work? We're a pretty, uh, pretty uh, friendly bunch here at Post. We are right? a friendly bunch. We've got a good working atmosphere, but I guess that comes from being aware of trying not to create conflict in itself anyway. I think you can turn any situation into conflict if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, particularly as a manager, you do have to think about how other people are feeling, but like the last poll that you talked about, and um, you know, making sure that everybody's heard as well. And I think that that can often cause cause issues where you know someone is already on a downer. They think their their opinion doesn't matter. You know how that how that then transpires into further conflict. Maybe not immediately, but a few days or weeks down the line as well. Um, so I think in answer, actually, we experience conflict very little here, yeah. which is great. Um, but uh, I guess as a manager, all... have you have you seen as a manager um, conflicts between colleagues as well? So do you have to sometimes act as a referee between conflicts between colleagues? Yeah, on, on occasion, um, and normally it's not something that I mean. In in, in all cases, it's never been unresolvable, um, and uh, you know usually it's because people are passionate about what they're doing and what their work is, and so you know it's they've got a good sense of ownership over it. And I think when 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 you've got that. And someone disagrees with you. I think that's when when those sorts of yeah. things can come in. Normally, it's not. Uh, fortunately for us, it's not just a case of, sort of the playground tactics of I don't like this person. It's generally work related, uh, <laughs> and therefore hear. hopefully resolvable. Um, so uh, let's see. Let's see how everybody else voted. We've got a good good response here. So let's have a look. And so there we go. So we've we've got most most people rarely and. And number two, whatever we would call number two, and then sliding down to again, we've got we've got uh, four percent often uh, experience conflict at work. So that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I put I put a rarely answer, but we can always improve our work environments by being better at recognizing and dealing with conflicts. So, what causes conflicts? It works a variety of issues relating to both aspects of the work environment and the behaviour of individuals. Common causes of conflict are frustration, unfair treatment, personal issues, so what's going on at home that perhaps could be affecting it, poor communication, I think that is key, perceived gain, clash of personalities, strong differences of opinion, unreasonable expectations and competitiveness. So we're going to look at those in a bit more detail. So frustration occurs when a situation or experience fails to live up to its expectations. This includes long delays and punctuality issues, lack of attention, and failure to provide what someone wants or requires, so particularly in, in I guess, deadline situations, times of stress, you can often get frustrated. Perceived or actual unfair treatment at work is caused by practices people see as contrary to natural justice. So we all have expectations regarding procedural fairness, the explanation of decisions, the protection of individual rights, impartiality and equal treatment. Personal issues such as illness, death of a relative, divorce and medication may overspill into the workplace, unfortunately it's unavoidable sometimes, resulting in a person requiring additional flexibility and attention. Ignoring or not accommodating these needs can lead to conflict. So I guess that's not just from a manager perspective, but from a colleague perspective as well. Um, perhaps making some allowances and, and being understanding of that. Not communicating or inaccurately relaying information can lead to conflict, as can providing the incorrect information. Furthermore, ignoring a person, displaying a lack of interest, or communicating in a way that is perceived as, inoffen as offensive or inappropriate can cause conflict. All really important things to be thinking about in your work life. Although most hostility is due to anger, individuals may use aggression as an instrument to achieve their goals. That is, if a person has experienced positive outcomes through aggression, they may continue to elicit this behaviour, for example, to in intimidate and apply pressure. I mean, I've certainly been in, in 
um, some sales environments whereby the manager's tactics are to, to shout to get results. Um, and it's just not an effective way of working. It doesn't, doesn't lead to a happy workforce at all. And clash of personalities, that can lead to conflict and can be aggravated by differences in work style or background and attitude. You know, if someone's constantly negative or constantly has got, got bad things to say, that can have an effect on a whole team. A whole team's um, personality can change due to just one person. So differences of opinion can escalate into conflict between individuals if not properly managed. Uh, it can be due to subjective understanding, lack of knowledge or cultural background. And expectations that are or are perceived to be unreasonable can result in conflict. Examples that include the expectation to work late without warning or to work on sociable hours, an unrealistic workload or moving the goalposts on projects. That is so annoying. Um, and customers might have unrealistic expectations of products or services. So it's really important that you, you talk about that and have, have systems in, in place to, to set expectations. And competitiveness. It can be a really useful tool in the workplace, but unhealthy competition can create conflict. Competition is unhealthy when it leads to insulting or sabotaging behavior, hostility between individuals or a focus on individualism rather than teamwork. That's something I think we do really well at Posture, right? That we are a team rather than individuals. Absolutely, and I think that helps with the, with the re reduction and avoidance of conflict as well, as everyone has got a common goal. On the same page. Absolutely. So, guys, we've got another scenario here. You work in an office environment and have arrived half an hour late for work. Your line manager reminds you that this can be disruptive and could be considered disrespectful. He says, everyone else seems to be able to get here on time, so why can't you? Now, you've observed that another of your colleagues consistently arrives late, but has never been reprimanded in the same way by the manager. On a scale of one to five, how do you feel? So five is angry, one's pretty calm about it. What do you reckon, Chris? How would it make you feel? Oh, well... Um, we we avoid this actually altogether by um, <clears throat> introducing a flexi working policy. So I've managed to change our <laughs> particular department so it's impossible to be late because you <laughs> clock in and clock out as necessary, um, which actually has helped because we did actually have before introducing the policy, we did have um, particularly with different roles that we've got within the department, the impact of one person being late was far less than another, and so it did seem unfair if people we've got kind of multiple departments within the same uh, floor there were different it did seem that there were different rules uh, but by introducing this policy it has literally avoided it uh, altogether which is a nice benefit really <laughs> <laughs> so I reckon that would make me feel pretty miffed I'm gonna go for a three on that excellent and this is one this is a non-interactive one Eddie so we're gonna move on from this one we can't we haven't asked the audience for this one so uh, Okie doke. Okay. So, bear with me one sec, guys. Sorry, guys, having a bit of a technical difficulty. Sorry, you guys are getting a refresher here. Going through it all again. So, so I'm selecting two for that one. And there's some advice given there. And then on to section three, apologies. So the purpose of communication is either to convey a message or understand a message conveyed to you. But many factors can influence how this message is perceived and understood. To put it simply, noise can come between two parties and affect their ability to communicate. So noise encompasses the language used, body language, stereotyping, cultural differences, educational background and perception. To communicate effectively, it's important to be aware of these disruptors as they can lead to misunderstandings and, communicate, and a breakdown in communication. So here we go. Think about your own work environment. How often do you experience that noise affects communication in a negative way? 
Right, Ellie, this is a poll we do have, by the way, so the technical hitch avoided now. Um, <laughs> well, noise is, noise is a difficult one, isn't it? It's, it can be incredibly distracting, and, and it, if you are feeling any form, you know, if you're feeling pent up, just noise adds to that. And it's yep. not just at work, I find that at home. I've got a, <laughs> a collection of children at home, um, and quite often there's, there might be an iPad, the television, my wife might have the music on in the kitchen as well, and I cannot think. And so if I ask someone asks me a question, I find that that actually can lead to conflicts, and I do end up turning all the sources of noise off mm -hmm. so that we can have a conversation. So I'd say yes, often um, that that does certainly it for does me affect does affect it absolutely yeah so let's submit that one and what did everyone else reckon okay so good, good mixed bag mainly in the middle there between two and four um so um yeah so it is, it is an issue yeah so again we can always improve the way we communicate by being aware of disruptors and minimize them so think about the language that you use tone, pitch and volume of verbal communication can serve to both calm and escalate a conflict. Speaking too quietly or loudly can exacerbate a situation, while a calm term can, a tone can pacify it. Generalizations and condescending language can inflame a situation. For example, phrases such as, we never do it that way, or you should always do this, can lead to a breakdown in communication. Addressing people informally can be seen as a lack of respect, while insisting on being formal may act as a barrier. It's important to get that balance. A rule of thumb is to mirror the person that you are addressing. Insulting and offensive language should never be used. So body language. It can help you build up a rapport with a person and in turn reduce conflict. However, it can also lead to a breakdown in communication. Non-attentive stances or aggressive gestures can inflame the situation, and insincere and disrespectful facial expressions such as rolling your eyes can lead to misunderstandings. Failing to respect someone's personal space is likely to make them feel uncomfortable. Stereotyping. So acting on preconceived notions of a person or group can lead to false assertions and misunder misunderstanding and give the impression that you are judgmental and not willing to listen. And cultural differences. This can hinder understanding and cause conflict. The differences may include language spoken, appearances, gender, body language. Educational background, in fact. So using technical language, acronyms, and, and subject-specific terms. So for me, getting involved in um, a software, it, it wasn't an industry that I'd worked in before. So. When I first started, I could feel quite foolish or quite stupid when, when you know, techie people are, are talking about all these terms. So um, I was lucky that my boss was very good with me and, and sat me down and talked about it really gently, although Excel is still, still beyond me. I'm going on a course in a couple of weeks. Um, and perception. It's how we perceive things can affect our interpretation of events, and it's important to understand that the people's different perception of things. So... Now we're just going to have a bit of a chat about body language. It's important to know how, how you're perceived and how you're looked at. If you, is that something that you've considered, Chris, in, in your work life? Yeah, I think so. It's a, it's, fasc it's a subject that fascinates me, actually, because it is the, sort of the, the, the inner workings of the mind and how the other person is affected, not just by body language, but the, the, the actions you take, the noises you make, the environment that you're in is um, the... Um, uh, neuro-linguistic programming, all that sort of stuff, which we, we did a, a sort of um, a few uh, courses on last year as part of our uh, sort of development in our well-being terms. days, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's a fascinating subject, and how you know, particularly in a meeting, if you're opposite someone, if you're doing a similar thing to them, they naturally feel more relaxed, which yeah. is a really interesting. Um, Do you tend to mirror then mirror the person yeah, you're in a meeting with? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, depends if I want a conflict to arise, really. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, if you um, and then you've got, uh, as I can see, you're doing at the moment, Ellie. Your, your arms are crossed, so therefore, your um, and your legs are crossed as well. So actually, are you this feeling... is my concentrating. So, well, to be honest, that is that's something that I I was made aware of when I was studying. Um, a lecturer was talking to me and and turned to me and said, like, what's what is wrong in front of everybody? What is wrong with you? 
and I, I said nothing because I was I really respected this lecturer and was really having a lovely time listening to him but my my concentrating face tends to be a bit aggressive like I, I really frown and it, it tends to look a bit disbelieving so that means that in my professional life I have to be aware of that and I, I've taken that on board and and I, I do lots of nodding and lots of agreeing and, yeah. and smiling and have to actively think talk to my forehead and think calm down stop frowning or even you know <laughs> if, you're, if I'm frowning at you I'm just finding it interesting to know. Due to lack of time, we're going to um, skip the body language part and go on to conflict resolution. So it can often be resolved by both parties focusing on solving a problem as opposed to focusing on each other's. Always remember, hard on the problem, soft on the person. So again, in your own work environment, how often do work conflicts involve personal attacks unrelated to the real issue? So, I mean, it, it could have been that, that somebody didn't replace the coffee in the coffee jar in the communal kitchen, but actually it turns out... It's the one thing that tipped it over the edge. Yeah, because John and Margaret just hate each other. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Well, I think from our point of view, we, I can't think of an instance where we've had what I consider a real conflict that has has been as a result of that, really. I mean, it's... um. Uh, so I, I'd say here, rarely, I guess, or maybe, maybe well, we're it's... we're just so sickly here at Post we're, right? we're just too harmonious. Cheeky, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking back to past, past job roles, though, where, you know, work conflicts could get really personal. And then that, that doesn't help diffuse it, does it? That just escalates it. So what's everyone said? Okay, so I think we've got similar places around uh, around the country to, to what we have here. Is we've got a high high number one, which is great, and uh, if not a number one, it tends to be in a two or three. So um, a nice lot of harmonious workplaces uh, oh, around, which is good. Good stuff. So focusing on each other rather than the problem at hand will often escalate the conflict rather than solve the issue. Important to know. So the LEAPS model can help you manage conflict and diffuse aggressive behavior. So LEAPS stands for listen, empathize, ask, paraphrase, and then summarize. So this model focuses on resolving the issue and can be used in any engagement to help manage conflict. This section then goes on to each, each part of the LEAPS model in more detail. What I did want to have a look at with you guys, though, is the aggressive behavior, because sometimes it can get nasty, and it's important to recognize the emotional state of other people in order to respond appropriately and safeguard yourself and colleagues. Nonverbal signs are often visible before a conflict escalates into aggressive behavior or violence. So, have you ever experienced people turn abusive with no prior warning? I launched the poll. Ellie, have you, have you? Yes. particularly in the workplace? Again, not here, but yeah, absolutely, I have seen it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we go on your past experience, we can answer one way, and hopefully your experience so far at Postify <laughs> has not led to this. Um, Certainly not. <coughs> good. And, has anybody uh, else experienced it? Let's have a look. So uh, let's launch, launch the results. <coughs> well, we do have... Uh, I thought everyone would say rarely. How interesting! Two percent are in the in the often. So there is there are some occurrences uh, there somewhere, and we've got some threes and fours. But um, again, we've got a, a nice harmonious harmonious place where we've uh, come on this this year. Brilliant. So <clears throat> anger is an emotional state that sometimes leads to aggression. It's accompanied by biological changes, so increased heartbeat, tense muscles, fast breathing, and raised blood pressure. It causes behavioral changes, such as fast and loud speech, and provides telltale signs that a person is on the edge, such as drumming fingers on the table and rocking. So the warning signs, indicators of possible aggressive behavior include staring and holding eye contact, pallor change, squaring up, fast breathing, pacing, Slamming doors, drumming fingers, rocking or gating, erratic movement and behavior, fast and loud speech, or swearing, sexist and racist abuse. Look out for that, guys. And the danger signs. The following are signs of a possible attack and should not be ignored. Clenched fists, eyebrows and chin dropping, lowering body, 
hands above waist tight and clenched, T lips tight in a snarl, clipped responses, showing teeth, and standing side on in a fighter's stance. Crikey, I hope that never happens at post, right? And the behavioral switch. Where you observe an individual who appears calm, relaxed, quiet and subdued, suddenly becoming loud and animated, this could suggest that person's becoming angry. But what if you observe an individual who appears agitated and loud, suddenly becoming quiet, unresponsive and apparently subdued? You may think the individual is calming down, but it could also indicate that person is preparing for an attack. Some people are naturally loud and animated, especially when faced with a stressful situation. Likewise, some people are naturally quiet and introverted. So we could misinterpret a person's true intentions or mood if we only observe their body language. A much better indicator is a sudden switch in behaviours. So a quiet person becoming loud or a loud person becoming quiet. I thought that was quite interesting. I'd never really thought about that before. No. And again, when conflicts escalate, so it can't always be resolved. Despite your best efforts, they may spiral out of control, and it's important to know when to engage and attempt to resolve a conflict and when to retreat to safeguard yourself and your colleagues, or I guess when to escalate to management. So have you ever experienced violence or abuse at work directed at yourself or others? Well, I guess you know when the answer's coming here. It is no, <coughs> fortunately. Very, very little. I can think of very few occasions where I'd even sort of closely consider that to be a scenario that's happened here. But again, I'm guessing your previous in your previous lives, you may have, may have experienced something along those lines. I, I got promoted over a girl once, and uh, she offered. To, she offered. She uh, she threatened to slap me in the boardroom once. Nice. Yeah. Luckily, HR was there, so it was quickly diffused. But um. So what did HR do in that scenario in order to? avoid or resolve the conflict? We were separated uh -huh. immediately um, and HR took her away into a separate room and gave her a warning. Not a slap, I hope. No, not a slap. <laughs> she probably deserved one. I didn't just say that. Um, but yeah, but I, I had to, you know, I, I could have made it so much worse, but luckily I was had my manager with me who, who advised me to be really calm and just deal with it really gently, so, so it was avoided. Excellent. Right, let's have a look and see what, see if we've see if we've got any fives this time. No, we haven't got a five, which is great. Um, so and most people are in the ones and twos. Um, but some people have. Some people twos, have. threes, and fours. Yeah, Luckily, yeah. it's not happening often, but it's those rare occasions, I suppose, that you need to be prepped for. You need to be trained yeah. on what to do, because nobody should be subjected to violence or abuse whilst in the workplace. So policy, the first step to safeguarding yourself and colleagues is to signal that abusive and violent behaviour is unacceptable and to outline the consequences of such behaviour. If violence and aggression pose a risk to you or your colleagues, your employer has a duty to reduce this risk to an acceptable level. As a minimum, your employer should have a clear policy on how to do this. So have you read and understood your company's policy on violence and aggression? Like what, what is the policy? What should you guys do? Um, here's a diagram on escalation. A person can exhibit these patterns progressively or, or jump several stages. It's talking about compliance, verbal or, or passive resistance, and active, aggressive and aggravated resistance. And be aware of the impact factors. Is anything that could aggravate a situation and increase, increase the chance of a situation escalating? Like alcohol, drugs, peer pressure maybe, having an audience, feeling belittled, mental health issues or access to weapons. Crikey. So if a situation gets out of control, take steps, you know, distance yourself, stand side on in a defensive stance and make sure that you're in a safe place. Don't isolate yourself or get cornered and seek out other colleagues that may be able to help you. And act today. Although aggression and violence are rare, I mean, as our polls have shown, haven't they, Chris? It's essential to be prepared. Assess your work environment. Check that there is a clear policy. Um, ensure that your employer has a current and fit for purpose risk assessment in place. Is there a safe area in your work? Is there a safe area within your work environment or in the vicinity? And what would you do if there was a threatening situation? And reasonable force. So 
under UK law, you have got the right to defend yourself and use force that is reasonable in the circumstances for self-defense or defense of property, prevention of crime, or lawful <coughs> arrest. Um, let's hope it never comes to that, but again, important to inform your staff of what to do. And in conclusion, we've got some do's and don'ts. So remain calm, show respect, listen and focus on so solving the problem. Don't be hostile, don't provoke, don't lose your temper or take things personally, or make promises you can't keep, because that is really annoying. And there we go. At the end of the test, you get a harmony score. So look at the result, harmony or conflict. There's always room for improvement, whatever the score. Reflect on how you might use what you've just learned to improve the way you deal with similar situations or improve your working environment. So there you go, guys. I've taken you through it. Sorry about the technical mishap, um, and I whizzed through some of it. But as always, if you want to know more information, we'll send you guys an email um, and just get in touch if you want a proper demo um, or to have a trial of the course. Great, thanks Ellie, that's really interesting and um, we hope you enjoyed that. Um, we've also got we've got a, what should be a really popular webinar coming up in about three weeks time, well exactly three weeks time, or an active working special, how to sit, stand, how sit down desks will improve your business. Um, so I hope you guys can tune into that. If you want to register now, just go to posturite.co.uk forward slash webinars and you should be able to find it from there. Uh, and until then, uh, have a great weekend and um, See you then. Thanks.